well first things first how are you really good like yeah really it's um so it's actually it's like a really nice day i'm like yeah just getting excited about playing some more shows we've done one festival so far this summer and just so excited to be playing more basically it's very good to hear and you're playing a couple of shows in the netherlands in the, in, in a short time so that's very excited for us um, before we talk about the new music and everything that's coming up, I'd like to just have a quick look back at Blue Hours because it was kind of, I, th I think, partly created in a very weird time in the world, but also it was very successful in a way, not I th not only um, as, as music in the music industry, but I, I would say in terms of your own personal kind of uh, working through things so so how do you now look back at the album good question i haven't it's so funny like we've been working on all these all this new stuff so it's been a while since i've thought just about it but i think i'm really proud of it i'm really proud of like i think kev and i like i think kev does some stuff on that record like it's just Kev is like an amazing musician and like continually baffles me <laughs> as to how he can play so many different things so brilliantly. Um, and I think there's some really amazing moments of his, of his performing on that record and his like, um, yeah. So, I mean, as like a kind of bandmate that I feel really proud of him on that level. And I'm also just, I think on the songs, I, I think, everyone had to reflect so much in that time there wasn't anything yeah. else to do um and i think i naturally do that quite a lot anyway and then was doing it like even more um but to be honest before i went in the studio i really thought i didn't think the songs were very you know i was a bit nervous i didn't think the songs were particularly good and i i think i just it was like in the process of getting back in the studio and recording and working with kev and with ian our producer and our bandmates and the world was slowly starting to open up you know i think everything just felt better and better all the time and then when we released it and yeah people seemed to like it and think it wasn't just the ramblings of a bunch of mad dudes it was um it was a really nice feeling um so i think i already feel pretty weird and mad when i'm working on stuff because it sort of takes ages and i'm on my own a lot and then Kevin and I both probably feel a bit mad while we're like recording it. And then when it comes out, it kind of feels great. But with obviously with COVID, you had no idea when that day was going to come. So yeah, it's just um I just feel very relieved that the world is also so quickly returning to what its former kind of state, which is obviously great. <laughs> You mentioned this moment of doubt when you're creating something and you kind of realize that at some point you're going to release it to the public and people are, are going to have their say about it. Uh, mm. Is that kind of the, the way you describe it? Is that kind of the the plight of an artist almost? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they do, you know, like I think like and that's the that is the scary thing is that you'll make this thing and it'll be like, I don't know, like. <laughs> I think in in our band as well, we we really, I mean, I when I'm writing songs, I really try and talk about what what really matters to me. I, I actually don't really know any other way of doing it. So I wish I could sometimes write songs that meant less to me because it would be easier to take any criticism. But you know, like if you're writing, I don't know, like there's a song on the out on Blue Hours that's about. Um, my mother who has dementia right. um, and, and and it's like you're talking about something like that and it's like it's really hard to separate yourself from the band and from the song and from us because it's so personal and and that's that's why it's magical but yeah it's definitely like when someone goes like yeah I didn't like that <laughs> you're like it can hurt a lot but I think at the same time like we're in the very fortunate position of we make things we travel around the world and we get to perform for people who are really lovely. And, you know, there are some people who travel around the world and aren't like applauded at gigs and stuff. <laughs> and we are. So like, we're very lucky. That side of it, kind of the connection that you made with, uh, make with the audience, especially uh, during live shows, but also kind of the, 
I don't know if it's, if it's if a confirmation is the right word, but this kind of uh, yeah approval. I don't again. I don't know if approval is the right word, but this this sense of approval that you get from the audience is that important? Um, I think I think like some people are like no, not at all, and I think we're definitely not no, not at all. I think I think we genuinely seen. Uh, the audience's relationship with our music is quite collaborative mm. um, in the sense that when we were starting out and writing songs, we didn't really know that they were any good. And then we'd perform them live and we'd be like, oh, that that needs more. Like the audience would kind of, by their reaction, would kind of tell us whether the song needed more work or not. Mm. Um, like mainly on arrangement and stuff like that. Like I think there's a danger if you like overly think about your audience when you're making something. Because first and foremost, you should try and make something that you're really proud of. If you want other people to really enjoy it, then I think you need to kind of hopefully be really proud of it. But I think for us to say like the audience is sort of doesn't matter to us or whatever is just not true at all. Like I think for us, it's really like um, hopefully when we when we play these songs, even to this day, like we played a festival in the UK last weekend and straight afterwards we talk about like how we can improve things. And that all comes from the feeling we get in the room with an audience. Um, and you go like, you know, it's like, it's only got one chorus there on the record, but it just really feels like we want to take it up again. Like, um, and we could, or actually like we could really make this way more intimate. We still think about that all the time. And, and yeah, so I think audiences really matter to us. And also, um, yeah, like when I think historically, like there's always been a distance between audiences and people making things. Um, but now I think there really isn't that much. It's like, you know, you make something, you post it on, a, you post a video online, people are commenting and telling you like directly. It's like, and we, yeah, that we feel so lucky that people engage with what we do and so thankful. So, yeah. We're not we're not one of those bands that's just like we don't care at all. <laughs> no, but it's also cool, cool to hear that um, that playing music is also a living and breathing thing. That it's not just kind of uh, basically putting on the album and playing it exactly as as it was on the album, and then just going home again. It's there there is some some give and take with the audience. So that, that's really cool to hear. So <laughs> moving on to first loves then. Because you have been quite productive in the uh, last couple of years. I mean, Fragments was only uh, three years ago, then Blue Hours, and now uh, First Loves, and you did a bunch of stuff in between. I think you helped uh, uh, with the music on the Trying soundtrack at a British TV show as well. So yeah. this 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 proliferation of, of, of work, uh, where does that come from? Um it comes from a grump, uh, grumpy household. No, I. <laughs> it comes from. No, I. Um, I think I make my partner grumpy sometimes. Uh, but no, it's. Um, I think, over the pandemic, it it didn't feel like we'd made a lot of stuff. But I think, um, I'd actually I'd kind of started writing stuff. Uh, I think so. The pandemic. Our last gig was like February twenty twenty, mm. and I think we. I, I think I was kind of thinking about the next record straight away. And then like March was the lockdown and it was like, or like the world was shutting down. Um, but I think really it was like a year and a half of writing and the trying soundtrack was really fun. I'd never done anything like that. Like, and that was really fun to just have a story and you're just writing songs based on the stories that are there, um, which was quite nice kind of escaping my own head mm. a little bit. Um, but yeah, like, these songs, these first love songs were like a little collection of songs that didn't quite feel right on the Blue Hours album, but the majority had been started at least during that same process. Um, okay. And yeah, they were just all all kind of about the same thing and they were all about falling in love and, it, and like first times falling in love in kind of different ways. And I don't know, that just kind of felt interesting maybe again the kind of reflective pandemic period of time just makes you go back to like early experiences with love i'd also i became a dad like two years ago okay and i think as a parent sort of learning about the love that you feel for your like kid it's like 
whoa that's a whole new <laughs> like that's an enormous amount of feelings that i just didn't have like five minutes ago and i think all of that mixed with the nostalgia and stuff just created this little body of work really yeah yeah what i write i uh, wrote it down <coughs> about these songs is uh power imbalance in romantic uh relationships because the and, and this happens all the time and in, in any form of it it can be from at anything between platonic and a full-on uh, romantic relationship there's always in my opinion at least there's the, this imbalance where one person is a little bit more into it than the other or uh why is this such an interesting topic and as you mentioned what what did it uh, what kind of memories did it bring back from from your early attempts at love <laughs> yeah attempts i think is the right <laughs> word um i think it just like what i was interested in was like and i think it was brought on by becoming a dad like i think i felt like it was so enormous like becoming a dad was such an enormous feeling and it reminded me of like those early experiences when you like first fall in love with someone for the very first time and how like just in awe of that experience you are and like it's so powerful it's not and you know that doesn't really change as you grow up but it perhaps softens a little bit and becomes a bit more complicated or we get more complicated as people and make it more complicated but I wanted to just kind of get a yeah like talk about that kind of intense the intensity of that and then the scale of that being so enormous um and yeah I, I suppose I just wanted to explore that but I think you're right I think all of them kind of also have this well, in Evelyn, there's a sort of someone is very, very in love and the other one is kind of you're just a friend. And then Helen is kind of a different thing. But you're right. There's also there is a dynamic there of like Helen's kind of like, is she just going to is this what she does to many different people? You know, is this the kind of and then. Yeah, it's like Summer and Smoke is a bit more intimate, but again, it's kind of like waking up in the morning and it's all disappeared. And then Teach Me Ava is literally just a song like to my to my daughter, which is cheesy, but <laughs> I had to do it. It's, you know, um, but yeah, like just I guess all of them are just exploring. Yeah, the enormity of those feelings, really. And I, I love the the line between kind of infatuation and, and then falling over into kind of a da more dangerous side because you mentioned the hell of Hammersmith Bridge and, and the way I, I can interpret it, it doesn't have to be uh, your interpretation but mm. uh, the way I interpret it is it's also a sense of manipulation that a woman knowing that that a guy is willing to do literally anything for her and then kind of using that in a way and then the guy being in a or doesn't matter which which gender but yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> so so this uh the dangerous side of love in, in a sense is, is that something you find interesting yeah yeah absolutely like I think I think um both Helen and Summer and Smoke and maybe Evelyn as well like but I think those two in particular there's like a darkness to them as well like mm. almost like and I think that often is like um but I, you know, that that I suppose is my early, 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 early experience. Perhaps <laughs> uh, need to see a therapist about it. But like, no, I think there's a, <laughs> I think there's like my early experiences often were like, you know, there was there was unrequited love. There was mm -hmm. moments where you were like, oh my god, this is everything, and you wake up the next day and it would just be it would have vanished. Like the whole experience would be like, have, would have vanished, and but you know, you would have been feeling things so intensely, and and yeah, like I think there's definitely like a loneliness there um as well like in in this sea of like huge emotions there's also like a loneliness and like an incredible attachment i think i was thinking of um with summer and smoke i was thinking a little bit of like the movie call me by your name um and how like how you know when timothy chalamet the f end of that film is just staring into the fire and like, I don't know if you've seen this film. Have you seen it? No. no. Oh, you would love it. Anyway, I'll, yes, I'll check it out this week. But yeah, like Timothy Chalamet at the end, end of the film. Oh, I, sh I won't ruin it. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, I should have said spoiler alert. Um, no worries, no worries. But yeah, like, um, it's just a really, it's really powerful. There was another thing though. I I saw a play. Um, there's this playwright 
called Tennessee Williams, who I, I got really into when I was working on, I think so that you might hear me, I started reading his stuff. And like, I watched a play of his, I watched this play of his called Summer and Smoke. And it was so good, and so amazing. And it was all about falling in love, two different people falling in love, and it being the wrong time, like one of them being mad in love with the other, but it being the wrong time. And then it reverses, and it's just the wrong time as well. Um, and so it doesn't work, but both characters at different times experience like this huge, intense, uh, f- these huge and in- hugely intense feelings towards each other. And I watched that play and I just immediately went home and started writing about like my first experiences of falling in love and just kind of used that, the feeling of that play to back to sort of, I was just trying to evoke the same sort of feeling. Um, but yeah, like that's an, that story and play is amazing, but um, it just, it really sparked me thinking about those early relationships and how they've informed things now as well. Sorry, I'm rambling a lot. <laughs> no, 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 it's perfect. Um, the, what I find interesting then is because, well, you mentioned you're now in a relationship, you have, you have a, a daughter. Yeah. Um, when you're younger, if you think about the future and love in the future, it, it feels so distant in, in a way. And, and where you are now, if you look back at that younger version of yourself, what would you tell him? Yeah, good question. Um, I'd probably give him some advice on become it like you know when you become a dad it it, like life changes quite a lot but I think not not a lot I think you know just I think I like really like everyone does though when you're really young you just really feel everything and I I actually think as I get older um I really try and cling on to that stuff because I don't want to not be like that I want to I think it's life has a very good way of trying to beat that out of people and you know like as you get older difficult things start happening more regularly you know uh relatives might uh, get unwell or friends might sort of fade away from your life who you thought would be there forever and stuff and it's really easy to get jaded and cynical and i think quite a lot of me did or was doing that over the course of the last five ten years and maybe like becoming a parent's given me like a whole new lease of life in that regard and and reminded me that all that early stuff that feels really far away is the is the magic of like being alive and that's the stuff you need to like seek out look after always like remember yeah always remember it and kind of and and make sure that you're present i don't know like make sure that you live presently with those same same sort of the same range of emotion try not to like get clubbed down or something no that i definitely have noticed that in myself as i'm growing older you become a little bit harder and a little bit more Mm. cynical and a little bit more uh yeah, the untrusted uh, or less trusting of the world. But as you mentioned, it's important to be open still to do, to to those those experiences. I think um, musically, then, because uh, Blue Hours was kind of this 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 uh, next step, I would say, for, for musically. Um, this is a little bit more what what we're used to from from uh, you guys. So so what was the and you mentioned kind of Kevin's uh, musical prowess as well. So, so what was the approach musically from the sonic landscape uh, for these four songs? Um, I think it was a real. It, each song is a little bit, little bit different. But I think um, I wrote a few of these things on like a classical guitar, which is quite rare for yeah. Bear's Den. Um, and I think normally we'd kind of go like take that and then turn it into something else. But I think it just felt like really nice playing them on on a classical and that and then we kind of just went with what felt right next to that rather than you know often when we're making albums normally it's kind of i'll start with an idea and then really we kind of like throw a lot at it and kind of manipulate it and change it and it ends up becoming a kind of totally different beast that happens say like i don't know quite a lot of the time but with these songs i think it felt um like actually let's kind of embrace the intimacy because the songs were all about sort of one-on-one intimate moments and I, th- I think we 
whilst we both love exploring like electronic stuff and big electric guitars and synths and whatever drum machines there's also like a really important part of what we do that's so intimate and i think um again i think that's also something that as you get older you forget and kind of go like no let's just like have fun with synths and drum machines or whatever because they're like cooler and you don't know about them as much but it's like sometimes you know i still know that the most powerful experiences i've had at gigs are often when they don't sing into the microphones and it's in the audience and it's or it's someone playing a piano and it's just that can be every bit as powerful as like an orchestra and so it's just remembering that for us and and i think it it's it's always something that we'll try and do i think whether whether they whether we like make whole records like that i I don't know but i think it definitely felt like with these songs we didn't want to like overdo them evelyn i suppose we kind of went for um (laughs) but it just felt it felt really fun that was again that was a really intimate song and was a bit less um was definitely less kind of full-on but i think we just both kind of went what if we went for it and it just felt really good (laughs) straight away Um, (laughs) so yeah Fair enough. What I find you just mentioned mentioned Evelyn, and what I always find interesting when it comes to songs that have, pe- have people's names in it is where, where those names come from, because there, there there have been millions and millions of songs with uh, millions of different names. So, was there ever an uh, an actual Evelyn in your life, or is that, is that just a name that sounded nice? So there was an Evelyn in my life when I was a kid. But it's like a story based on like a lot of different other people but i just love the name evelyn it was very nearly what i it was it was in the running for my daughter's name as well so it was like it was a name that i sort of bonded with throughout my entire life because i've got i had a friend when i was very young called evelyn who is who is a legend and (laughs) but i think um and in a way like i kind of i like um I think sort of you don't want to end up like writing a song specifically about a person and using their name and it being like really intense for that person. I, I, right. I feel there's a boundary there that I try and like steer on the right side of. But I think that song is about a lot of different people in my life and a lot of different sort of relationships and friendships I had and things that I wish were more than friendships. And I was really just trying to get across the feelings I had regularly when I was younger I suppose. um but yeah just uh it was yeah it was a it was a cool song to explore and but yeah I know what you mean about names and songs no it's always interesting to me and now also I think that that idea of unrequited love is is something that most people will be able to relate to I mean unless every uh, somebody in the world has been 100 percent successful in everything <laughs> every romantic endeavor they had I mean yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, I'm, I think. <laughs> I think it's pretty universal, isn't it? Like, yeah, I think we've all been there. <laughs> Last question, then. Uh, you just mentioned kind of the, those intimate songs, and now I'm not a performer. I, I do have a couple of instruments, so I kind of have a sense. I, of I don't worry. I've been checking out what you've got by there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I've, I've never played for anyone, and uh, nor do I have the ambition to do so. But the those intimate moments on stage, when you, as you mentioned, you can write. I mean, you have written uh, enormously personal songs about things in your life and you, then then you're on stage in front of hundreds if not thousands of people and then it falls really quiet and it's just you and your voice and and, and some finger picking what is that like is, is it very transcendental uh, how do you how could how do you ex- experience those live moments um it's a it's like it's like amazing uh it shouldn't be amazing (laughs) on paper it should be like awful like terrifying yeah yeah and terrifying and it kind of is but it's kind of it's also i look forward to it the most in our set like when we unplug all the stuff and then just play without any microphones or anything it remind it, it just sort of reminds me of like everything gets really complicated and there's cables everywhere and there's so many people we work with and we're like working with all these amazingly talented people to like bring these songs into this big world and you know just plugging in everything is like a proper job (laughs) for lots of different people and um and yeah it's but but fundamentally like it's just 
singing a song about something that matters to you and like i find that you know some of those some of those songs that i've written have been so have been as you say like so personal um and when you perform those things people generally i think are quite taken aback by how personal you go and if you're but i think if you're willing to do it um generally i think people have always been so like kind and warm about it in the sense that the amount of times we get emails and messages saying like i just want you to know that this song really helped with this or whatever and talk about other people talking about their own lives and what you know maybe it'll be like crow or pompeii or something but these songs just have a, have a really deep meaning for other people and they're so personal to me and by proxy like and also just so personal to us as a band um but yeah we love those moments and and there's a real like power to um power to like uh being that vulnerable i think and like be letting yourself be vulnerable classic like thing again but it's um it's really scary but if you do it it it's just it's a really magical thing um and we've just been so lucky because audiences have always supported that and and fortunately the words resonate with people and they and and they bring their own experience to the songs which kind of means that they're not really our songs anymore they just become everyone's and and that's what it feels like when you're playing a gig and you just cut out cut out all the mics and we're all in the room and you can kind of hear people whispering the words as well and you're like it just gives you goosebumps and makes you go that's why i do this like it's for that it's not for like the the big electric guitar chords and the big vocal moment it's like it's like that feeling like somebody gets it um and i get that from the audience and hopefully we we as a band can help give that to them as well so yeah sure very quickly then uh and if you have to go let me know but uh, hmm. when is when was the last time you had this feeling about somebody else's music or a song that you heard i have it all the time like <laughs> i think um it's been like a little while since I've been to a gig, but basically like normally most gigs I go to, I get moved in some way, you know, like I watched um, Billy Martin. Have you heard Billy Martin? Yeah, yeah I've, I've talked to him, uh, to her uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, amazing. Well, she's, she's obviously fantastic. Sure, so yeah. I was like, I went to her gig in Bristol recently with a friend with Harry who plays electric guitar in Bears Den as well. And we were both just stood at the back and actually Billy, her guitar was off being repaired and it didn't make it back in time for the tour. So mm -hmm. I got a message being like, can I borrow your guitar? And so like, I, I she was like, you know, I was kind of going down as well because I, I hadn't met her, but I was asked by her tour manager if they could borrow my guitar. But I went and watched the gig and it was, she was, she was just brilliant. And she's so, she's so talented. Her words are so fantastic. And but yeah, just the whole thing was like goosebumps the whole time. And yeah, I think I, it happens to me quite a lot, really. I, yeah, I'm, I'm a uh, flight as well. The band flight who I think are brilliant. Um, Christoph who plays in Bears Den, his songs, I think are like, <laughs> I think his songs are so moving. He's got a song called empty handed. I swear it's still like, if I want to like, really be moved by a piece of music i put that on it's so good so yeah like I, you know you're talking to the wrong guy if you want me to say that it doesn't happen very often it's not, get it all the time. no it's quite the opposite i love to hear that that enthusiasm still that that because like like we talked about a little bit i mean as as, as you get older as, as as we work in this business it's, it is a music business um yeah. It is easy to kind of uh, uh, check out a little bit, but the fact that you're still engaged and you still uh, allow yourself to be moved by all these uh, moments, I think is great. I think so. I think I know. Yeah, I think I definitely over the last couple of years have been sort of like regaining that. I think I'd lost it a little bit and I think I'm getting it more and more. And it's just, yeah, but I, I think you're totally, I think it is connected to exactly what we were talking about at the beginning that like, yeah, don't want to lose that stuff because it's the best thing. Right. Best feeling ever. 
Yeah. Andrew, may I thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me? Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Like it's um just yeah, thank you so much for the ridiculously insightful <laughs> questions and, and being thank you. nice. So yeah, it's awesome, man.